In this example, I told you guys to do 7 through 12. I wanted you to factor and solve. So first of all, if you guys automatically thought about solving, well, then we know that when we're solving, we want to make sure we're finding the zeros, right? We're setting our equation basically set equal to 0. So I am just going to replace g of x with 0. Then I told you guys to factor. But unfortunately, you guys know when you guys take a test, you're not going to have that hint of like, hey, factor. It's just going to say solve. So you're going to have to identify when you can factor, when you cannot factor. <laughs> Well, the easiest thing that I look at is factoring is first, I know I can factor out at least a common factor, right? Yes? So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to factor out a common factor. Oops. Um, minus 2. Actually, I'm sorry. I can factor out a 2x, right? So my common factor here is a 2x. So in factoring out a 2x, I'm now left with a 6x squared minus x minus 1. Correct? Yes? OK. Well, now I know I could apply like the zero product property, right? You could say, oh, 2x equals 0, or 6x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Well, this one's easy to solve. You just divide by 2. x equals 0. But this one's a little bit more difficult, because this is a what? A quadratic, right? Now we. Thankfully, we spent the whole chapter learning how to solve quadratics. And there's three ways we learned how to solve quadratics. <clears throat> factoring, completing the square, or quadratic formula. So I don't know if this is factorable, but I'm going to try to see if it's factorable. It said, you know, I told you to solve by factoring, so this should be factorable. Um, but let's go and take a look. I'm not going to do the long way. I'm going to do the short way just to try to figure this out. But ladies and gentlemen, if I know that my first two, I know I have to multiply to give me 6x or 6. Right? So my options are either 6x or x. Um, or I could do 3x times 2x. Does everybody agree with me? Those are my only options, right? As far as the least rational numbers. Those are my only options. So now I just need to figure out what two numbers would multiply to give me negative 1. Well, that's not too bad. That's only, that has to be negative 1 and positive 1, right? But the negative one could be here, positive one could be here, or they could be switched around. Yes? And that's the same thing for this one. So you can either start doing this stuff in your head or just kind of use an eraser and just you know guess and check. Let's try this one. We know that the first two terms gives us 6x squared. The last two terms give us negative 1. Let's see which one, when we multiply the inner and the outer, give us negative x. Well, obviously, we know this is not going to work, right? Because 6 times. Negative 1 is negative 6x, and x times 1 is 1x. Negative 6x plus 1x is negative 5x, right? So this one's actually, they're going to be two separated. But I know this 3 and the 1, these are separated by 2. So um, why don't we try this? So that one doesn't work. Well, 3x times 2x, 6x squared. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 2x times 1 is positive 2x. 3x times 1 and 1, negative 1 is negative 3x. Negative 3x plus positive 2x is? negative x, which is my middle term. So guess what? This works. So I can use zero product property again to say 3x plus 1 equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now I can solve. Is it OK if I don't use my inverse operations and just solve it, since we've already taught this information? So you could say your solution set is negative 1 third, 0, 1 half. Yes? Agree? Disagree? So just remember, guys, if it said solve and you couldn't factor this, you would have to use quadratic formula, right? Because we know that there's three zeros, right? We know there's three solutions. But remember, those solutions don't always have to be real. They don't always have to be real. These are the real solutions. These are the x-intercepts. And just think about this. Do these zero, since these are real and they're x-intercepts, do they cross or do they bounce? Does any of them bounce? Let's see that. Let's ask that question. Any of them bounce? How do you know if they bounce? Based on the mu mu multiplicity, which is based from the factors, which they all have a power of 1. So they would all cross. And then all you'd have to do is know the end behavior, which if you do not know the 